Hi, I'm Marissa Miller, and today we are going to be learning about proportions. So, I actually developed this worksheet that we are going to use, and it's called Carrie's Cake Proportions. So, question number one says, Carrie made a cake on Tuesday with nine cups of sugar to three cups of flour. How much sugar will Carrie need if she makes a cake with 10 cups of flour? So I'm going to go ahead and get us started off. And what we're going to do is set up a proportion box. So we have, we're measuring sugar and flour that's going to be put in Carrie's cake. So flour, sugar. All right. And we know her first cake is going to have nine cups of sugar and three cups of flour. How much sugar will Carrie need if she needs to make a cake with 10 cups of flour? So 10 cups of flour, we will put it here. This is the flour row right here. So in order to solve this one, we're going to be using the cross multiply and divide method. Um, I developed an acronym for students to be able to uh, remember this cross multiply and divide method and it is cookies milk after dark. Now, if you get hungry, you want a late night snack, cookies and milk works great. Um, so cookies milk after dark, cross multiply and divide. So first we're going to cross multiply. 9 times 10 is 90. We're going to use that and we're going to take our algebra tile and we're going to solve by taking the 90 and dividing it, because we're going to have to divide, by 3. So, knowing that these are base 10 blocks, How many of these tens will we need to make 90? Go ahead, answer. Nine. Good. Good job, Jessica. Nine tens to make 90. 10, 20, 3, 40, 50, 60, 70. 80 and 90. So there's our 90 that we got here by cross multiplying and we're going to have to divide it by 3. So how many would we have to group together to of these base 10 blocks in order to divide it by 3? 30. No. So we have 90 here. We have to divide each of these up by three. How many is going to be in each circle? Um, ten? Not quite. All right. So let me do it this way. So we need three, right? We need, sorry, I'm doing this way. We have 90 here. We're dividing it by 3. So in order to show that we're dividing by 3, remember in our previous unit, we have to group them together in even amounts. So in order to do that, to divide by 3, which this one's pretty simple because you don't, I mean, it doesn't take too, too much thinking, but you divide by 3, you put 3 in each group. So dividing it by three. There's three groups of the 90. And remembering that these are base 10 blocks, we're going to have to count these by 10. So 10, 20, 30. 10, 20, 30. 10, 20, 30. All of that is even groups. So now we have our answer. Our 90 divided by three is 30. 
So that's going to be how many cups of sugar she's going to need with 10 cups of flour for her next cake. All right. So we're going to go over the other ones a little later. Um, but for now, we're going to jump to the next page, and I'm going to show you the next method. Um, I do want to say that the bonus questions on the page are for our certain advanced students. So I will put their names up on the board, and those of you whose names are up on the board, y'all will do the bonus. If your name's not on the, up on the board and you feel like doing the bonus, go for it, but it's not going to be counted against you. Okay. Um, it's just, it'll be something to do for fun for those of y'all who are on the board. So let me take these off and we will go. Why don't y'all go ahead and turn to page two, question number four. We're going to work that one out together on the board. Hey, y'all knock it off right there. I'm talking, okay? We're learning a lesson right now. You don't interrupt during the lesson, okay? All right, so question number four. Let's see here. It already gives us our portion box for Carrie's ingredients she needs for cakes. Um, so the box actually says, all right, N is up here. And minus three, three, and two. All right, so remember last time we used the cross multiply and divide method? Well, this time I'm going to show you the cross multiply balance method. And this will help us to be able to solve for n a lot easier than the cross multiply and divide method will. So, what we're going to do cross multiply balance. So cross multiply, based on the last problem, what do you think we're going to do for the cross multiply step? Multiply. Multiply? Okay, all right, good. Um, but what about the cross part? We have the cross part in there. Divide. No. So cross multiply, remember? Cross multiply. So we're just going to be doing, um, we're going to be multiplying each of the diagonal portions of the proportion box. All right, so in doing that, 3 times n is 3n. 2 times n minus 3, we're going to go ahead and solve that. 2 times n is 2n. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And those two are going to be what we're going to plug in together to balance the equation. All right, so we're balancing it right here. All right, so now we're going to take our counters that we used in our last lesson and we're going to use the base 10 blocks. All right, so for the base 10 blocks, our little square pieces, let me see if I can grab one, our little square pieces are going to be what we're using for our n variables. And our counters are what we're going to be using for our just single unit variables, or our, our just units. Um, so, in doing that, over here, how many n's are over here? Three. All right, good job. Three ends. How many ends are over here on this side? Two. All right, good job. You are doing excellent today. Hey, I told you I'm going to knock it off. If you talk again, you're going to have to sit on the hall, and you're going to have to figure this out yourself. Okay? So make sure you're paying attention. All right. So with our negative 6, we're going to use our counters. Remember I said it's a negative 6, 
so we're going to use the red side of our counters because the red side is the positive side, the yellow side is, or sorry, the yellow side is the positive side, the red side is the negative side. So we're going to need six of those negatives. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so there's step one of our equation mapped out with our, uh, our counters and our algebra tiles. All right, so step two. In solving this, in order to balance this out, we must first get both of these algebra tiles on the same side. All right, so in order to do that, we're gonna have to cancel it out with some negatives. So what color algebra tiles am I gonna use cancel those out. Green. No, not the green ones. If I have the same um, color. Red. Red. Good job. Go. Alright. So we have two reds over here to cancel those out. And then we have two reds over here cancel two of those out. Because remember what we do on one side in algebra, we have to do on the other side. So we now have these two canceled out. And since we also had to do the same thing on this side, we canceled out two of those. So that's done. And then we will bring the lonely yellow tile down. And then we will also bring the lonely individual counters down. And since we have one in variable, do you think we're even done yet? No. Actually, we are. Because remember, we, our goal was to get the in by itself, right? So we have the n by itself, and we're left with our answer to be negative 6. So that was a pretty quick and easy equation, but we're not finished yet. We do have the value for our n, so we can go ahead and write that as our answer right there. But we must also plug it into those equations. So let me and we are going to solve for n to get our final answer in these two proportion boxes. So let's say she has three teaspoons of vanilla here and she has two teaspoons of salt here for her frosting, for Carrie's frosting for her cake. So we also need to figure out how many teaspoons she needs for this and how much salt she needs for her next cake, for her next batch of frosting for her next cake. So we will plug in the six to each of these ends. Three in, and then do three times six, which would equal 18. So n equals 18. And then on the next side we have n minus 3. We plug in the negative 6. There's a negative 6. And then minus 3. And then negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9. She has negative 9 salt instead. Pretty crazy, I know. But there we go. There's our final answer. Make sure you write what you're solving for, like what which equation it was, so that I know what those are being solved for, and as far as the proportion boxes. Or you can even write them in the proportion boxes if you have room. But great job today, guys. Go ahead and start working on the next round of equations.